What's crackalacking, y'all? My name is Wariatha, and I'm a second year medical student at Howard. And fun fact, everything I have ever interviewed for, I have gotten. Actually, apart from one scholarship I applied for in 12th grade, but everything apart from that, I've gotten. So I think I have some valuable interview tips, especially for BSMD interviews. So that's what I'm going to be giving to y'all today. So I'm just going to get right into it. Tip number one is to know what interviewers are looking for. Keep in mind, they've already seen your application. They've already seen your stats. At this point, based off those, they think that you might have a good shot. But now during your interview, they want to look for four main things. Quick disclaimer y'all, I'm not on any admissions panel and everything in this video is my opinion but it's based off my experience and research. Number one, are you mature enough to handle BSMD? For a lot of condensed BSMD programs, you're going to be starting medical school at a younger age. So they want to know if you're mature enough to become a doctor at a younger age and they also want to know if you're mature enough to handle the coursework. Successfully completing a BSMD program takes a lot of discipline and you have to be able to make many wise decisions throughout your undergrad career. So that's why admissions like to assess your maturity during the interview. Number two, admissions officers are looking to see, are you sure about medicine? When you do a BSMD program, you're committing to a career in medicine much sooner than many others would. And at the end of the day, it is a binding contract you're signing when you decide to go into the program. So they want to make sure you've already gone through various avenues to explore medicine and explore other career options as well and they want to know that you have a very solid drive to become a doctor because at the end of the day what they're trying to do is get top students to go to their medical school but if you start the program and you don't end up going to your medical school then it's almost like why did we spend these resources on this person so they want to make sure you're sure about your career choice number three admissions officers are asking themselves is our program a good fit for this applicant it's not about just knowing okay can this person handle BSMD but they want to make sure that they'd be able to grow and thrive at this institution. And that's why it's so important to tailor your application towards each and every medical school you're applying to. And number four, they're trying to see, are you personable? Overall, are you a nice person to be around? You don't have to be super extroverted, but can you carry a conversation? Are you friendly? Do you have traits that you'd want to see in your physician? So I gave that tip first because it's important to have those four things in the back of your mind throughout your interviewing process. The SMD interview tip number two is to know your resume inside and out. Because remember, they can ask you anything off your resume. And it would be kind of embarrassing on your part if they ask you about something and you don't actually know much about it or it's just something you just threw in your resume but you're not actually passionate about it all. You need to be able to back up your experiences and say how they all contributed to making you who you are today. Also, if there are any experiences that you didn't put on your resume, maybe because you just started it after submitting your application, also think about that if you think it may be relevant or you think it may boost your chances. Studying your resume will also help you prepare for the interview just because it will give you a list of topics that you can discuss when prompted with a certain question. Tip number three would be to know where you're interviewing. And I don't just mean knowing the location of the place. I mean doing research on the undergraduate institution and the medical school that your BSMD program is affiliated with. Because remember, you're going to be spending a good chunk of your life at both. You need to tailor your interview preparation to each individual school and its mission. Remember, the goal is not to just convince the admissions committee that BSMD is right for you, but to convince them that their BSMD program is a good fit for you. Some things that you can think of are the school's mission, the school's location, location, the community or population that the hospital there serves, any special statistics your school may have. For example, Howard produces the most black doctors. So look into anything special that your school may have. Any special programs or clubs at your specific undergrad institution or the medical school. If you're interviewing for a BSDO program, you can also discuss why the osteopathic route is better than the allopathic for you and how that aligns with you more and so on and so forth. Find some something about the school you're applying to that meshes with your own personal goals. Because at the end of the day, if there's nothing in particular you like about that school, it's kind of like, 
So why are you here? Tip number four would be to actually prepare. And to do this, what I want you to do is make a document of every possible interview question for a BSMD program that you can think of. And once you do that, jot down how you would answer the question. Remember, this is not a script. Don't write it in a script format. Just to know what topics you would bring up and just basically summarizing what you would say. The goal is to, by the end, have a mental bullet list of what you're going to say once you hear a certain question. To help you guys out, I will actually link down the questions I used down in the description box. It'll likely be a Google Doc link. The one I'm going to link down is going to be Howard specific. And remember that you need to make it specific for each school that you're applying to. And if you were to look at the document, you would see that there are a lot of questions there. And as you can imagine, doing this may be a time consuming task and it could be hard to focus. Personally, for the past few weeks, I've been trying out Magic Mind Productivity Shots to help me focus. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you guys about the Magic Mind Productivity Shots. I've been using these for a while now. And you may have seen in the last video Video where I mentioned them but I've been using them quite often when I have to study and one of the effects that it has that I really like is that it kind of offsets the negative aspects of caffeine so as a medical student I find myself drinking coffee relatively often but then I find myself getting very jittery and this has done a very good job of kind of offsetting that while still keeping me in that mental state of focus before I used to just take it alone but I recently started trying it with coffee and I feel like I've been feeling the effects more so I do recommend checking it out you can use the code oriafa 20 for 20 percent off your purchase using the link in the description okay back to the video as you're writing out your answers on the document keep in mind people love stories there are some questions that may naturally yield a one-worded answer but it's best to give some sort of reasoning example or story to back it up so when you're asked, oh, what's your best trait? Don't just say, oh, I'm very disciplined. Give an example, like a story that shows your discipline. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna go through two or three questions that I was asked and how I approached answering them. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the oh so dreaded, tell me about yourself. There are a multitude of ways to approach this question, but the first thing you need to do if you haven't done so already is to introduce yourself. You'd be surprised how many people for get to do that. Aside from that, I use this opportunity to talk about my family, my culture, my background, the fact I'm Nigerian, and I also used it to talk about something that I enjoy outside of academics. I specifically mentioned cheerleading because that's something that I spent a lot of time doing at the time. I usually approach this question by keeping it light and friendly, and I do that so that I can come across as personable. We'll have time to talk about all my accomplishments later in the interview, but just who you are at your core, who you are as a person, is what I try to talk about when prompted. And when answering this question, remember that you need to keep it concise. It can be very easy to ramble, but I would practice trying to answer this question in 30 seconds or less. Another question that's more BSMD specific that I was asked is why BSMD rather than the traditional track? According to my notes, I would have responded by saying that I work best under pressure and I feel like the BSMD program would give me the challenge I'm looking for because if you don't know, Howard's program is six years. So undergrad would do it in two years, so it would be a bit tougher. And secondly, I mentioned that doing the BSMD program would save a lot of money, which is true, and I wasn't ashamed to say that because that probably is the main reason I did it. I didn't spend as much on undergrad tuition, and I was able to pay less for the first two years of medical school. Also, I don't have to spend money applying to multiple medical schools. So I was honest about that because it truly is a factor, and it is something that would help me be more financially free in the future. I also wrote down that I like how things are very clear cut. I know that if I fulfill a certain number of requirements, I will get into medical school. So it eliminates uncertainty that might be associated with the medical school application process. And I think these are all good reasons. And your reasons don't have to be the same. Just be honest about whatever is driving you to do BSMD. Because it is very challenging and they have to know that you truly do want it. The third question that I'm going to discuss is a question that most interviews, whether it's medical school, a job, most interviewers will ask you this question at the very end. 
Do you have any questions? Please, y'all. You must have questions. Most people say to prepare about two to three questions, but I say have at least six questions in the back of your head before walking in, and it's possible that some questions will pop in your head during the interview. I say to have more than just a couple because sometimes your questions can be answered during the interview, and sometimes just based off the context, it wouldn't make sense to ask a certain thing. So it's good to have a good amount prepared. And when you're formulating questions to ask, it's important to have done your research already. Please do not ask them about questions that are literally on the website because that'll show that you haven't really looked into the program. A few things you can ask, you can ask the interviewer about themselves, it's important to listen to their introductions, their name, and what they do when they introduce themselves during the interview. That way you can ask questions about it later. So if your interviewer is a cardiologist, you can be like, oh, why do you get into cardiology? If the interviewer does research, they can be like, oh, can you tell me more about the research you're working on? If your interviewer is just a BSMD advisor, you can ask something like, oh, what's something that you wish BSMD students knew before coming into undergrad? You can ask the questions to get a better idea of who they are because remember interviews are conversations and you can also just get their opinion on something. Also you can look up the institutions both the undergrad and the medical school and see if there are any recent current events that are going on and then you can ask them for their perspective on that current event. Let me just read out to you guys the questions that I had prepared when I made my preparation document. Ask whether BSMD students manage to participate in extracurriculars and internships. Ask about whether the BSMD program provides any sort of extra mentoring and help with preparing for the MCAT. Ask whether BSMD students know each other and work with each other regularly at Howard. Ask thoughts about CRISPR, which is something I had just learned about. It's this genome editing thing. So if they're a sciencey type person, they might enjoy answering that. Ask where they think medicine will be 20 years from now. Lastly, I have ask about their careers and life. So those are just samples. Obviously, I didn't use all those questions. When it comes down to it, you probably should only ask like one or two. But if there's anything that genuinely comes to mind that you actually need to know, feel free to ask as many as you'd like. Another big part of preparing for your BSMD interviews is to practice. Do mock interviews. I feel like if I had to summarize the importance of doing mock interviews into one word, I would say confidence. And I say that because it's important to practice saying your responses out loud. The more you say it and the more you practice it, the more comfortable you'll feel as those words are rolling off your tongue. And also you want to portray a confident persona. And what do I mean by that? Avoid saying um and other filler words. If you feel like you're not sure what you're gonna say, it's better to take a silent pause, take a breather, gather your thoughts, and then answer your question. In addition, you need to note your body language. How is your posture? Are you fidgeting? Are you looking at the interviewer in the eye? Are you rolling in your spinny chair from side to side? You need to take note of these things because you want to appear calm, collected, and confident. And also something that kind of ties into that that I think is a very, very underrated tip that I have. And I'm telling you guys, this tip has gotten me so far in life. Smile look happy and i feel like that's also just part of appearing personable remember in the beginning i said it's important to seem like a good person to be around so smiling or even if you're wearing a mask just speaking with a pleasant tone oh my gosh why my light turn off why my light turn off child okay anyway <laughs> speaking with a pleasant tone makes you seem more warm and friendly. The goal is to try to make them enjoy interviewing you because that makes you more memorable. I know you may be focused on trying to be professional, but being professional doesn't mean coming across as overly serious and flat. You need to balance your professionalism with your personhood. Another thing is to master how to sell yourself without rambling. Like I said, it's better to pause and think before you speak. Think, what do I want to get across? And try and say it confidently and concisely. 
And I feel like that is why it's so important to prepare and do mock interviews and practice saying things out loud. Because if you walk in not knowing what you're going to say and not knowing how you're going to say it, you're probably just going to end up rambling and saying things that don't necessarily answer the question they're asking. And it makes you look even more nervous than you probably are. Another thing I wanted to add is that if you guys are still doing interviews over Zoom, when you do your mock interviews, do them over Zoom and record the meeting so that way you can watch it back and see where you can improve. Make sure you're not standing with a window behind you because that makes you look dark. Make sure your webcam on your laptop is at eye level. If you need to, you can stack some textbooks or you can put your laptop on top of a shoebox. Whatever you need to do to make it easier to look at the camera. And tying into that, when you're talking to the interviewer, try to look at the camera rather than looking directly at them on Zoom. If you need to, you can kind of shrink the Zoom screen and drag their face towards the top by your webcam if that makes it easier, because I know it can be hard to do that because at the end of the day, you are talking to the person, but when you look into the webcam, it makes their experience of interviewing you just a bit better. Make sure your background is clean and nice. And if possible, try to not have a bed visible in your background. That one's not as big of a deal because as long as you're at a desk, it's like, okay. But if possible, try to make the area not look too comfortable. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm editing right now. And before moving on to the next point, I just wanted to add and address the situation of getting a question in the interview that you didn't prepare for. So to combat that, I suggest that when you're doing your mock interviews, ask the person who's helping you to throw in some questions that aren't on the list. Just so you can practice taking a breather, gathering your thoughts, looking into who you are, and then answering the question effectively. I've had that situation happen to me in countless interviews, so it is a good skill to be able to answer a question without having rehearsed it over and over. My fifth tip is to dress to impress, and that goes for whether you're doing it in person or on Zoom. Sometimes the programs may specify what to wear, whether it's casual, business casual, or business professional, but if they do not specify, go for business professional. You need to look up the difference between business casual and business professional. Based off my YouTube analytics, most of my viewers are female, so you can wear a blazer and dress pants, or you can wear a blazer and a skirt that's knee length or longer, and you can wear dress shoes, if I were you, I would wear flats because I remember every interview I had, they gave us a campus tour either before or after. It may be a lot of walking that day, so it's better to wear flats over heels. And with your jewelry, choose wisely. Don't wear anything too gaudy. I would wear hoop earrings that are small like this, but I wouldn't wear those larger hoop earrings. Studs are also a good option. For your necklaces, don't do anything too chunky. The goal is to look simple and clean. And if you're a guy, you know, wear your blazer your dress pants and please wear a tie i think that's the biggest difference between business casual and business professional for guys and also a big thing is to iron your clothes it overall makes you look much crisper and cleaner and more put together when you dress to impress it makes you look more confident right off the bat it also makes you feel more confident. Remember, first impressions are important. And as I mentioned earlier, BSMD admissions programs are trying to assess your maturity. So knowing these little details about professionalism can take you a long way. If you wear makeup, if I were you, I'd opt for a more conservative look. Let me know if you want me to make an interview makeup tutorial. But if I were to summarize it, think nudes, think neutrals. Chill on the false eyelashes. I love them, but for interviews, chill on them. Chill on the winged eyeliner. Red lips are not necessarily a no-no, but be cautious with them. If you want to do red, maybe do like a red lip stain. But in my opinion, a pretty nude lip combo is the way to go. And putting a nice sheer lip gloss on top of that is fine. And if you don't wear makeup, you don't have to, but for me, it's something that always makes me feel more confident. But just remember, don't do anything too crazy. Even if you just have something simple like what I have on now, that could work. And in addition to that, make sure your hygiene is in check. Try to avoid getting any stains on your clothes. I know for me, sometimes it does happen, but I carry around a little to-go Tide stick to clean it up in emergencies. Make sure your breath is fresh. Carry some mints if you like. Make sure your lips are moisturized. Wash your face. 
comb your hair, wear some deodorant, smell good, but don't wear some perfume that's way too strong. I wouldn't say that doing these little things adds to your confidence, but if you don't have one of them, it may take away from your confidence because then you may be hyper-focused. Oh my gosh, I forgot to wear deodorant. Are they thinking I smell bad right now? It's just going to take away from your focus on the actual interview. And another thing about hair, this is just my opinion. Remember, everything in this video is my opinion. But if you're someone who does baby hairs, please make sure they are baby hairs, not 17-year-old adolescent hairs not 26 year old adult hairs. I think the overall theme for this dress to impress is to look crisp, but don't do anything too out there. And finally, I just wanted to give a few tips for the actual interview day. Please come early. And when I say early, I mean 30 minutes minimum. I remember for my Howard interview, I came like 40 minutes earlier and I was still the last person to arrive, <laughs> which is very interesting, but I'm glad everyone there had heard the tip. And if it's a Zoom interview, maybe 15 to 20 minutes makes more sense. This can be helpful because A, it's nice to settle down and not be hyperventilating by the time you're starting your interview, and B, you never know what's gonna happen. Is there gonna be traffic? Is your laptop gonna die? Are you gonna have trouble finding parking? You just never know, so you want to give yourself ample time. And if you come early, it's going to give you the time to do the next thing I'm going to tell you to do, which is chat with and be nice to the other applicants. This especially goes for if you're in person and overall just if the situation allows. And I say this because you never know when you're being watched. And remember, even though yes, they're technically your competition, those are also your potential future cohort members. So it's good to start building these connections and think about it. How does it look to say all over your application that you like connecting with people like most doctors should, but then when they look at you in person, you seem cold. You gotta practice what you preach and just overall be a good human. I really do hope these tips helped you. Comment if you have any further questions and feel free to reach out to me by email. I would say Instagram too, but I'm kind of taking a break from it right now, but email is good. I'm wishing you the absolute best. Like this video if you enjoyed, comment, subscribe, and you can check out my BSMD playlist to see the ultimate guide for BSMD programs, a Q&A on my experience, and more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios. Bye.